Remember Kilroy, the peripatetic GI of World War II who was always there? Well, he's not here now. And anyway, he never made his mark with the graffiti experts of today. That's because he didn't have a spray paint can and a felt tip pen. For well, these are the real villains of the graffiti explosion. Everything was pristine one day, and all of a sudden you see all these names written. You're wondering, who are these people? And the more I saw of it, the more intriguing it became. The dynamic of writing your name, of doing something that's illegal, of having other people guess who's this person, is one of the many things that attracted me. It was a sign of the times. It was a sign of our youth, our lack of funds, and possibly the lack of paternal guidance. The whole idea, if you had a nice handwriting and they saw your name there, 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 that meant you were there. Names tended to be clustered. If you wrote underneath a wall, the next guy wouldn't write around the corner. He would probably write right next to you. Taki is a real name. I've always been called Taki by everyone. Well, the first graffiti that I noticed and uh, that I admired a lot and was Taki 183. Taki was the top dog. Taki took it to the max. I mean, I think this kid lived to write his name. I didn't start it, but I was just the next step. The boy got up. There's no denying that every place you look, you wouldn't see Taki. You could walk 40 blocks and see my name on every pole. Park Avenue, Lexton Avenue, Madison Avenue, Sutton Place, all the cross streets. And it just hit them all. And your name would be there, and people would say, how did you write it and nobody saw him? That, that was the big mystique of graffiti. After Taki was everywhere, there was an explosion of taggers. We were just having fun. You know, cops chasing, you know, it was a cat and mouse type thing. It started out as fun. It was an escape route. And we wanted to be known. The more we got into it, the more publicity we kept getting. They write their name around so they could be known. It don't make no kind of sense. I do not recall any of them calling themselves artists. We were not writing to make any political point at all. We were just vandals. The Vandals were a tribe of people who invaded Europe in the 4th and 5th century and for no apparent reason destroyed much of what they found there. Sometimes it seems as if the Vandals live again and have invaded the United States of America. When the peace officers learned that I was in custody, all the cops started coming to my cell asking me for an autograph. Back then, these were the celebrities. They were all over. Everybody knew them. UGA is what ground broke the writing culture into the art world. We were getting paid. We thought we were getting paid. Graffiti changed once that dollar figure came in and the first painting was sold because there was no value. It was like a Mona Lisa. It was never important to compete. We were family to each other and we made each other feel important. We were just being us, which ended up starting this movement. There was a certain purity to what the first generation of writers did but as some would say, the end of graffiti's innocence.